The cramped control room of the United Earth Space Force's orbital station buzzed with tension. Commander Jack Mercer leaned over a console, his eyes scanning the data streaming across the screen. Beside him, Lieutenant Carl Hayes, his second in command, tapped commands into his terminal. Signal's getting stronger, Commander. It's definitely not one of ours, Carl reported, adjusting the frequency on the receiver. Jack frowned. Any ID on who it belongs to? Negative. It matches no known Earth signals. This could be it, Jack. First contact. The room fell silent as the reality settled among the crew. Jack straightened up, his voice firm. All right, keep the line open. Any response? Carl shook his head. Silence so far. Without warning, the static on the main screen gave way to a clear image of a slender, silver-skinned being with large, luminescent eyes. The alien's voice came through the speakers, modulated but unmistakably polite. Greetings from the Zeltron Federation. I am Envoy Thalvac. We come in peace. Jack stepped forward, his stance calm and measured. This is Commander Jack Mercer of the United Earth Space Force. We receive you, Envoy. Welcome to Earth's orbit. Thalvac nodded, his eyes scanning his own set of data. Thank you, Commander Mercer. Our intention was not to alarm you. We are on a peaceful mission through this sector and detected your presence. Carl whispered to Jack, Ask them why they're here. There's got to be more to it. Jack nodded subtly before addressing the envoy again. We appreciate the peaceful approach, Envoy Thalvac. May I ask what brings you through this sector? Thalvac paused, his expression unreadable. To be candid, Commander, we are here as a warning. Our sensors picked up activities from the Varegnus Empire near your system. They are not known for their peaceful intentions. As a fellow spacefaring race, we felt compelled to warn you. Jack exchanged a look with Carl, concern etching his features. Your warning is duly noted, Envoy. Do you have any information on their capabilities or intentions? The Varegnus Empire is expansive and seeks to incorporate new worlds rapidly. They may view your planet as a strategic asset. We urge caution, Thalvac explained. Carl interjected. Is there any advice you can offer on how we might defend ourselves? The envoy seemed to ponder this before replying. I cannot interfere directly in your defense plans, but be vigilant. Your technology is impressive. It may yet surprise them. Trust in your ability to adapt and respond. Jack nodded. Thank you, envoy. We'll prepare and stay alert. As the communication ended, Jack turned to the assembled crew. All right, people. We've got work to do. Carl, gather the senior staff. We need to assess our readiness. Carl nodded, tapping commands into his console. I'll notify all departments. It's time to strategize. Jack looked out the viewport at the stars. The weight of leadership pressed down on him, but the determination in his crew's actions fortified his resolve. They would be ready, whatever it took. Commander Jack Mercer stood at the front of the briefing room aboard the United Earth Space Force's flagship, the UES Vanguard. His audience was a collection of the top military minds and strategic analysts Earth had to offer, all gathered to discuss the imminent threat of the Varegnus Empire. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack began, his voice carrying a solemn weight, we've received credible intelligence from the Zeltron Federation about an alien empire with hostile intentions toward Earth. The Varegnus Empire is not just a potential threat, they are a probable one. Across the room, General Ada Clarkson, a seasoned officer with a sharp tactical mind, raised a hand. Commander, what exactly are we looking at in terms of their capabilities? Jack clicked a remote, and the screen behind him lit up with images of massive, sleek warships, each bristling with armaments. This is the latest from our recon satellites near Jupiter's orbit. These ships were spotted entering our solar system. We believe they're scouts, but their firepower is substantial. Dr. Leo Zheng, the head of Earth's extraterrestrial technology research chimed in. We've been analyzing the data provided by the Zeltrons. The Varegnus technology is advanced, but not invulnerable. Their shields have a high energy draw, likely a weak point. Carl Hayes, standing beside Jack, added, We've been running simulations based on their expected tactics. They favor overwhelming force, but our pilots are more agile, our response is quicker. We can outmaneuver them. General Clarkson nodded thoughtfully. What's our strategy for engagement, then? Jack paced slightly, hands clasped behind his back. Hit and run to test their responses. We need more data on how they react under pressure. Carl, I want you to coordinate with the lunar bases. Set up defensive perimeters and make sure our missile batteries are on high alert. Carl acknowledged with a brisk nod. We'll do, Jack. I'll also ensure our communication lines are secure. We can't afford any leaks or interference. 
The room's atmosphere was tense as the reality of their situation settled over the group. Jack's next words were decisive. This is not just a military operation. It's about survival. We'll need to be cunning, resourceful, and above all, unified. Every department, every unit, needs to be on board and ready for rapid response. Dr. Zhang spoke up. I propose we accelerate the development of the EMP cannons. If their shields are energy-intensive, a well-placed electromagnetic pulse could disable them, at least temporarily. General Clarkson agreed. An excellent suggestion, Dr. Zhang. Let's prioritize that project. Commander, what about diplomatic channels? Any chance we could negotiate with these Varegnus? Jack shook his head. Every indication we have suggests that the Varegnus don't respect what they perceive as lesser civilizations. They won't negotiate unless we can demonstrate strength. As the meeting drew to a close, Jack looked around at his team, each member now busy with their tasks, their expressions set with determination. We've been warned, and now we prepare. Let's show the Varegnus Empire that Earth is not a target to be taken lightly. With the room clearing, Carl lingered, his expression serious. Jack, do you really think we can pull this off? Jack met his gaze, his response firm. We have to, Carl. We have no other choice. As they exited the room, the corridors of the UES Vanguard hummed with activity. The ship and her crew were gearing up, not just for a battle, but for the defense of their home. The command deck of the UES Vanguard was a hive of activity. Monitors displayed the strategic positions of Earth's defense grid, while the hum of engines resonated through the hull. Commander Jack Mercer stood at the center, his eyes fixed on the main screen. Beside him, Carl Hayes and General Ada Clarkson monitored incoming data streams. Commander, we've detected a cluster of Varegnus ships moving toward Earth's orbit, reported Ensign Maria Torres from her station. They're smaller vessels, likely a reconnaissance force. Jack nodded. This is our chance to gather intel. General Clarkson, what's the status of our defense systems? Clarkson checked her terminal. All missile batteries are operational, and our fighters are on standby. The EMP cannons are installed, but not fully tested. Jack turned to Carl. Prepare our pilots. I want a defensive formation that can adapt quickly. We need to be ready for anything. Carl relayed the orders, his voice steady. Alpha and Bravo squadrons, prep for launch. Defensive formation Delta, stay sharp and await further instructions. The minutes ticked by as the Varegnus ships drew closer. The tension on the command deck was palpable. Jack's mind raced with possible scenarios, each one leading to a potential clash. He knew the Varegnus would be testing their capabilities, probing for weaknesses. Enemy ships are entering firing range, Maria announced. Jack took a deep breath. Hold your fire. Let's see what they do. The Varegnus ships began a cautious approach, their movements calculated. Suddenly they opened fire, laser blasts streaking through the void toward Earth's defenses. The first volley struck a satellite, reducing it to a fiery explosion. Return fire. All batteries, engage, Jack ordered. The UES Vanguard and Earth's ground-based defenses sprang to life. Missiles launched in unison, arcing through space toward the enemy. Fighters roared out of their bays, weaving through the chaos to engage the Varegnus ships. Carl's voice cut through the noise. Alpha Squadron, target their lead ship. Bravo, provide cover. On the screen, the battle unfolded in a dazzling display of lights and explosions. Earth's defenses, though outnumbered, fought with precision and ferocity. Jack watched as the Varegnus ships maneuvered, their tactics unfamiliar yet revealing patterns. They're focusing on our satellites, General Clarkson observed. They're trying to blind us. Noted, Jack replied. Redirect our fire to protect our eyes in the sky. EMP cannons on standby. The battle raged on, the Varegnus ships taking hits but not retreating. Jack could see their strategy, test the defenses, gather data, and withdraw. He wasn't going to let them leave unscathed. Maria, prepare to fire the EMP cannon on my mark. Target their lead ship, Jack commanded. Yes, sir, Maria replied, fingers flying over her console. The moment stretched as the cannon charged, its energy building to a critical point. The Varegnus ships continued their assault, unaware of the impending strike. Fire, Jack ordered. The EMP cannon discharged, a wave of electromagnetic energy rippling through space. It struck the lead Varegnus ship, causing a cascade of sparks and arcs of electricity. The ship's lights flickered and then went dark, drifting powerless. Direct hit, Maria reported. The sudden loss of their lead ship threw the Varegnus formation into disarray. Earth's forces capitalized on the confusion, pressing their attack. Missiles found their marks, and fighters took out vulnerable targets. 
Enemy ships are retreating, Carl announced. They're falling back. Jack allowed himself a brief moment of relief. Good work, everyone. Keep an eye on them until they're out of range. The battle wound down as the Varegnus ships limped away, their probing attack repelled. The command deck erupted in cheers, but Jack remained stoic. This was only the beginning. Carl, assess the damage and report back. General Clarkson, I want a full analysis of their tactics. We need to be ready for their next move, Jack instructed. Carl nodded, already working on the report. On it, Jack. General Clarkson added, We held them off this time, but they'll be back. We need to prepare for a larger assault. Jack agreed, his mind already working on the next steps. We've shown them we won't be easy prey. Let's make sure we're ready for whatever they throw at us next. As the crew settled back into their routines, Jack took a moment to look out at the stars. The Varegnus Empire had underestimated Earth, but he knew they wouldn't make that mistake again. The real battle was still to come, and he intended to be ready. In the aftermath of the initial skirmish, the command center of the UES Vanguard was buzzing with activity. Commander Jack Mercer was in the midst of a debriefing session with his team, discussing the lessons learned and the next steps to prepare for a more significant assault. General Ada Clarkson tapped her tablet, pulling up damage reports and enemy engagement data. We took some hits, but our defenses held up better than expected, she noted, looking up at Jack. Our response was effective, but we can't rely on traditional tactics alone. The Varegnus will adapt quickly. Jack nodded in agreement. Agreed. We need to push our technological edge further. Dr. Zheng, what do you have for us? Dr. Leo Zheng, the lead scientist responsible for Earth's defensive technologies, adjusted his glasses and cleared his throat. We've made progress on several fronts. First, we've improved the EMP cannon design to decrease charge time and increase range. Additionally, we're developing a new type of drone that can infiltrate enemy ships and cause internal chaos. Carl Hayes, leaning against the wall, chimed in. Infiltration drones could give us the element of surprise. What about our AI capabilities? We're enhancing our AI algorithms for better real-time battle analysis and decision-making support, Dr. Zheng explained. This should give our pilots and missile systems an edge in targeting and evasion maneuvers. Jack considered this, his mind racing through various scenarios. Let's prioritize these projects. We need every advantage we can get. General Clarkson, coordinate with Dr. Zheng to ensure these tech updates are implemented fleet-wide. General Clarkson nodded. Will do, Jack. I'll also oversee the training simulations to integrate these new technologies. As the meeting continued, Jack turned his attention to the strategic map displayed on the large screen. Our next concern is the Varegnus's probable return. They've tasted our capabilities and might come back with a larger force. We need to prepare our outer defenses, especially around key installations like space stations and lunar bases. Carl stepped forward, tapping the screen to bring up the locations of Earth's satellite networks. We should consider setting up decoys in redundant systems. If they aim to blind us by taking out our satellites, we'll need robust countermeasures. Jack agreed, his expression stern yet focused. Make it happen, Carl. Work with communications and engineering. I want multiple fail-safes. The meeting moved towards planning and resource allocation. Jack assigned tasks, ensuring each department knew their responsibilities. As the team dispersed, Jack approached Dr. Zheng for a private word. Leo, I'm particularly interested in those drones. How soon can we deploy them on a trial basis? Dr. Zheng checked his tablet, then looked up with cautious optimism. We can have a prototype ready for field testing in a couple of weeks. If all goes well, production can be scaled up quickly. Excellent, Jack replied, clapping him on the shoulder. Keep me updated. Your work could turn the tide. After the meetings concluded, Jack walked through the corridors of the UES Vanguard, observing the hustle and diligent work of his crew. Everywhere he looked, he saw determination and innovation at play. Scientists, engineers, and military personnel worked together refining their tools and strategies. Stopping by the main hangar, Jack watched as pilots and engineers tested out new flight maneuvers and weapon systems. The sight filled him with a sense of pride and resolve. Despite the looming threat, Earth's defenders were not just waiting to be attacked. They were actively preparing, using the best of human creativity and resolve to secure their future. As he returned to his quarters, Jack felt a renewed sense of confidence. The Varegnus might have superior numbers and firepower, but Earth had something just as powerful. The ingenuity and relentless spirit of its people. 
The quiet hum of the U.S. Vanguard's command center was shattered by the urgent blare of alarms. Commander Jack Mercer snapped to attention as data streams painted a grim picture on the main screen. Ensign Maria Torres, her voice tense, relayed the critical information. Commander, the Varegnus fleet has returned. It's massive, sir. Hundreds of ships, possibly more. They've launched a coordinated strike across several orbital points. Jack's jaw tightened as he assessed the situation. Status report on our defensive positions? General Ada Clarkson, who had been monitoring troop deployments, responded quickly. Our orbital and lunar defenses are engaged, but they're outnumbered. The Varegnus are deploying ground troops as well. Major cities are at risk. Carl Hayes added. Our new EMP cannons are operational, but we'll need precision targeting to make an impact against a fleet this size. Jack nodded decisively. Deploy the cannons strategically. Target their capital ships. Maria, coordinate with Space Command for real-time satellite guidance. Yes, sir, Maria replied, her fingers flying over the console. Jack turned to the rest of his command team. This is it. We need to hold them back at all costs. Carl, launch all fighter squadrons. Target their smaller support vessels. We need to break their formations. Carl acknowledged and quickly relayed the orders. Fighter jets, equipped with the latest in Earth's military tech, launched in rapid sequences, their engines lighting up the darkness of space. As the battle escalated, the Varegnus fleet unleashed a relentless barrage of energy weapons on Earth's defenses. The command center shook with the reports of impacts and explosions from the front lines. Jack, steadfast in his resolve, kept his focus on the tactical displays, issuing commands and adjusting strategies on the fly. General Clarkson reported another development. Jack, they've started deploying troops in the metro zones. Our urban units are engaging, but they could use support. Divert drones to assist in the cities. Use them to disrupt the Varegnus ground forces, Jack ordered. He then switched the communication channel to address the leaders of the urban defense directly. This is Commander Mercer. Help is on the way. Hold your positions and keep the invaders from advancing. As the battle waged on both fronts, Dr. Leo Zheng approached Jack with an urgent update. Commander, the prototype infiltration drones are ready. They can sabotage the Varegna ships from the inside. Jack considered the risks and nodded. Deploy them, Leo. Target the largest ships. If we can create confusion in their ranks, it could give us the edge we need. Dr. Zheng coordinated with the drone operators, launching the stealth units towards the Varegnus fleet. The drones, small and agile, slipped through the enemy defenses and began their silent assault. Meanwhile, on Earth, the urban battlefields were chaotic. Despite the Varegnus's superior firepower, Earth soldiers held their ground, bolstered by the support from the drones that disrupted the alien communications and weapon systems. Back on the UES Vanguard, Jack watched as reports of the drone's success started coming in. Several Varegnus ships reported malfunctions and internal explosions. Good work, Dr. Jang. Keep the pressure on them. The tide of the battle began to turn as the Varegnus fleet, now grappling with internal chaos and a fierce counterattack from Earth's forces, started to show signs of disorder. Jack seized the moment to increase their assault. Push forward, he commanded. All units, focus fire on their flagship. If we take down their command, we can break their resolve. As the flagship of the Varegnus fleet took significant damage from concentrated fire, its ability to coordinate the attack faltered. Seeing the opportunity, Earth's forces redoubled their efforts, driving the invaders back step by step. The siege of Earth was brutal, but through strategic genius and the unyielding spirit of its defenders, Earth was holding its ground. Jack Mercer, watching the battle unfold, knew this fight was far from over, but they had proven that Earth would not fall easily. With every minute, they were writing a testament to the courage and determination of humanity. The relentless battle for Earth continued unabated, the Varegnus Empire pressing hard against humanity's defenses. In the Vanguard's command center, Commander Jack Mercer oversaw the counteroffensive, his eyes never leaving the tactical displays. General Ada Clarkson, ever vigilant, updated Jack on their progress. We've managed to repel their ground forces in several urban centers. Our EMP strikes have crippled three of their largest carriers. They're reeling, Jack. Jack nodded, his gaze intense. Good. Let's not give them a moment to regroup. Dr. Zheng, what's the status on the infiltration drones? Dr. Leo Zheng, monitoring the situation from his station, replied, The drones are causing havoc, sir. We've taken control of two enemy vessels and used their weapons against the fleet. It's working better than expected. Carl Hayes piped up from his console. We've intercepted transmissions between the remaining Varegnus ships. They're confused, struggling with command and control issues. 
Jack's lips curved into a grim smile. Exactly what we needed. Carl, coordinate with our forces on the moon. It's time to push them back even further. Launch the secondary wave of drones to target their support ships. Carl acknowledged with a quick salute and immediately set to work, relaying orders to lunar base commanders and drone control units. The second wave of drones stealthily departed from their lunar base, making their way toward the unsuspecting Varegnus ships. Meanwhile, on Earth, the sounds of battle echoed through the cities. Despite the devastation, the human spirit remained unbroken, civilians helping to fortify positions and aid wounded soldiers. Every successful repulsion of the Varegnus troops was met with cheers, fueling the defenders with renewed vigor. Back on the vanguard, Jack received a crucial update from the satellite network. Sir, we've spotted a vulnerability in the Varegnus fleet's formation. Their flagship has moved to the rear, possibly for repairs. It's less defended. Jack seized on this information. That's our target. General Clarkson, assemble a strike team. We're going to take out their flagship. General Clarkson coordinated the strike, deploying a mix of human pilots and AI-controlled fighters to penetrate the enemy lines. As the strike team approached the flagship, they faced intense resistance but the disarray among the Varegnus forces gave them the edge they needed. The battle was fierce, with every pilot fighting as if the fate of Earth depended on it, which it did. Explosions lit up the void of space as the strike team made its way to the heart of the enemy fleet. As the flagship came into view, Jack gave the order. All units, focus your fire, disable that ship. The combined firepower of Earth's strike team overwhelmed the flagship's defenses. Critical hits disabled its propulsion and weapon systems, leaving it adrift. The symbolic heart of the Varegnus fleet was effectively neutralized. With their flagship incapacitated, confusion and disarray spread throughout the Varegnus ranks. Earth's forces took advantage of the situation, mounting pressure across all fronts. The Varegnus, realizing their precarious position, began to retreat from Earth's orbit. Jack watched the retreating ships, his face stern yet relieved. Monitor their withdrawal. Make sure they leave our system. Carl turned to Jack, admiration in his eyes. We did it, Jack. You did it. Jack shook his head modestly. We did it together, every one of us. Let's make sure we're ready if they ever come back. As the command center burst into a restrained celebration, Jack felt a moment of pride. Humanity had stood against a colossal threat and held its ground through innovation, courage, and unyielding determination. The battle might have ended, but the war for their place in the galaxy was just beginning. As the Varegnus fleet began its retreat from Earth, Jack Mercer realized that their victory was incomplete. The threat of a regrouped and vengeful alien force loomed large. His next move was crucial. General Clarkson, reroute our lunar defenses. I want every available unit ready for a potential counterstrike. They might try to regroup at the moon to cover their withdrawal, Jack directed, his eyes locked on the strategic display showing the moon's orbit. General Ada Clarkson nodded, swiftly issuing orders. I'm on it, Jack. I'll coordinate with the lunar bases to set up a defensive perimeter. We'll catch them off guard. Carl Hayes looked up from his console. We have movement near Sector 4. Looks like a portion of their fleet is breaking formation, possibly to rally at their forward base on the moon. That's our cue, Jack stated. We can't let them fortify. Prepare all squadrons for a full assault. This ends today. On the moon's surface, Earth's lunar bases bristled with activity. Troops fortified positions while missile silos were prepped for a synchronous strike. As the Varegnus fleet approached, unaware of the preparations, tension among the human defenders was palpable. In the Vanguard's command center, Jack watched as the first wave of Varegnus ships entered the moon's orbit. Fire at will. Target their lead ships. We can't let them establish a foothold. The lunar landscape lit up as missile batteries unleashed a devastating barrage, catching the leading Varegnus vessels off guard. Explosions dotted the black canvas of space as one ship after another suffered critical damage. Carl monitored the battle's progress, his voice steady. Direct hits on multiple targets. Their formation is breaking. Meanwhile, Earth's fighter squadrons, led by seasoned pilots, swooped in to engage the enemy. The dogfights were intense, with both sides suffering losses. But the advantage was with Earth's forces, their familiarity with lunar gravitational anomalies giving them the upper hand. Jack's focus remained sharp as he commanded from the vanguard. Push forward. Keep them disoriented. Deploy the infiltration drones to their capital ships. We need to end this now. Dr. Leo Zheng, overseeing the drone operations, confirmed the deployment. Drones are en route to the target. We should see their effects shortly. 
As the drones infiltrated the Varegnus ships, chaos ensued within the alien fleet. Systems failures and internal sabotage crippled their ability to retaliate effectively. One by one, the Varegnus ships lost power and control, drifting aimlessly in the harsh lunar orbit. General Clarkson updated Jack on the status. The enemy is in disarray, Jack. Their command structure is collapsing under our assault. Jack allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction. Prepare for the final push. This battle ends on our terms. With a renewed barrage from the lunar bases and relentless pressure from the fighter squadrons, the remnants of the Varegnus fleet were overwhelmed. The Battle of Luna was brutal and decisive. As the last Varegnus ship attempted to flee, it was struck by a missile, erupting into a brilliant fireball that marked the end of the conflict. Jack stood in the command center, his crew around him, each face reflecting the fatigue and relief of victory. Monitor the debris field and remaining enemy signals. I want continuous sweeps. They're not coming back from this, but we need to be vigilant. Carl approached Jack, a slight smile breaking through his fatigue. You did it, Jack. We did it. Jack nodded, looking out at the stars beyond. We defended our home, Carl. Let's make sure we keep it safe for the future. The Battle of Luna would go down in history as a turning point. A moment when humanity not only survived an alien threat, but proved its mettle in the unforgiving expanse of space. Jack Mercer, a commander not just by rank but by action, had led his people to a hard-earned victory. The aftermath of the Battle of Luna left the Varegnus fleet in ruins, scattered across the expanse between Earth and its moon. Commander Jack Mercer, standing in the command center of the UES Vanguard, surveyed the reports coming in. Minimal human casualties and significant enemy losses. It was a decisive victory, but the weight of command and the cost of war rested heavily on his shoulders. General Ada Clarkson approached Jack, her expression serious yet relieved. The Varegnus are retreating, Jack. Surveillance confirms their remaining ships are exiting the solar system. It seems we've dissuaded them from any future attempts. Jack nodded, his gaze lingering on the digital maps displaying their victory. Make sure our monitoring stations remain alert, General. We can't afford to be caught off guard again. Carl Hayes, who had been coordinating the recovery efforts, joined them. Recovery teams are deployed. We're salvaging what we can from the debris. There might be tech we can use to bolster our defenses further. Jack considered this, turning to Dr. Leo Zheng, who was already examining the preliminary scans of alien technology. Dr. Zheng, prioritize any technology that can enhance our defense systems. I don't want this kind of threat catching us unprepared ever again. Dr. Zheng nodded eagerly. Absolutely, Commander. There's a lot we can learn from their tech. I'll ensure our teams are on it. As the cleanup and recovery operations continued, Earth's governments convened to reassess their position in the galaxy. Jack was called to brief world leaders on the conflict, the lessons learned, and the measures needed to prevent another such assault. Standing before the assembly, Jack delivered his report with clarity and conviction. Ladies and gentlemen, this conflict has taught us about our vulnerabilities and our strengths. The Varegnus underestimated humanity's resolve and our capability to defend ourselves. We must take this opportunity to unify our efforts, to strengthen our alliances, and to prepare for any future threats, be they from the Varegnus or elsewhere. His words resonated across the global community, sparking a series of initiatives aimed at space defense and technological advancement. New treaties were signed, and the Earth Space Defense Alliance was formed, a testament to the need for cooperation among all nations. Meanwhile, on a personal note, Jack visited the families of the fallen, offering condolences and honoring their sacrifices. Each visit was a sobering reminder of the cost of peace and security. In the weeks that followed, Earth saw a period of mourning mixed with rebuilding. Monuments were erected in major cities, commemorating the bravery and sacrifices of those who had fought in the battle. Jack attended the unveilings, his presence a comforting reminder of their victory and survival. At the final ceremony, Jack spoke to a crowd gathered in New York City, under the shadow of a new monument depicting a globe surrounded by olive branches and swords. We stand here today not just as survivors, but as guardians of our world. Each name inscribed on this monument tells a story of courage and sacrifice. Let their memory guide us as we move forward, vigilant and prepared. We owe them that much. As the crowd dispersed, Jack stood alone for a moment, looking up at the monument. The weight of command was his to bear, and though peace had been secured, the future was a vast, unknown frontier. But for now, Earth was safe, and humanity had shown that it would not yield to tyranny 
or aggression. Jack turned and walked away from the monument, the setting sun casting long shadows. He was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, guided by the enduring spirit of those he had vowed to protect.